Before we start, I need to disclose something. I did serve as a consultant on the development of this product. Now, the design was largely decided when I got involved, so I didn't influence it a lot. But I want you to know that I received payment for services rendered. There are no commissions, no royalties, no affiliate deals. You can buy a dozen of these and I won't make a nickel off of it. Oh my God. It's like a miracle. So here we have an attractive little hand grinder in the 200 to 250 price range. It's called the Eureka Baby. It opens easily and the lid stays in place when you close it. It holds about 30 grams of coffee in my experience and has a catch cup with a coarse thread for quick mounting and dismounting. The cup fits the opening but is a little tricky to fill with beans as your target is kind of small. It has great burrs, and I do mean great, as I'll discuss in a bit. They're made by Ital Mill and are plated, not quite sure with what, which leaves them very sharp but longer lasting than plain hardened steel. Some coatings can leave the burr edges feeling a little blunt compared to plain steel, but that's not the case here. These are 48 millimeter, which is the outer diameter of the ring. The conical burr is 32 millimeters in diameter. It's simple, but precisely made. Total measured run out on the conical burr is about one and a half thousandths of an inch, or say 38 micron. Conicals have to be aligned strictly, both in parallel and in concentric orientation. Flat burrs are more forgiving. If you haven't got a test indicator, you can use a backlight to estimate run out. And that's what 38 microns looks like. The ring burr has an interference fit with the body so it won't come out for cleaning, but it also won't shift. The device has only a few parts and could not be easier to disassemble and clean. There's a QR code on the bottom here. If you scan it, it will send you to a landing page with extra information, including suggested grind settings for various types of coffee. I'm going to do pour over and espresso today. During the time I was working on it, I used it for Turkish, Espresso, Mocha Pot, V60, and French Press, using three different coffee samples, probably 15 times for each individual combination, and I took heaps of notes that I'll be relying on today. One thing I omitted, I did not try it with the AeroPress because there's no standard method. Owners use them in myriad different ways. Some people would likely face arrest over how they use their AeroPress. I'm going to start by grinding for pour over. It's not hard to use, but there are a couple of issues. If you place your hands near each other, you're gripping a low friction surface on the body. It wants to rotate, so you need to hold tightly, and that gets tiring. You can position your hand lower and get good friction off the glass, but then your hands are apart and the grinder body acts as a lever and it kind of fights you. It's not really much of an issue with coarser grinding like this, but when you're grinding for Turkish coffee or espresso, you'll see what I'm talking about. The center adjustment screw is knurled. If you're careless and it catches the soft skin of the inside of your wrist, well, you won't make that mistake twice. I'm doing my standard test recipe, 30 grams of coffee and 450 milliliters of water. Again, I always sieve off the boulders to get rid of the chaff so that we can see better. This grinder produced 2.8 grams of boulders off a 30 gram sample. Perfectly reasonable for a conical burr. So let's look at the performance. A noticeable layer of fines, but not excessive. For tasting, I always use the full dose, not the sieved one. That's just for illustration. And the flavor was balanced, complex, with a broad range. HDR coffee, you know, high dynamic range. I liked it a lot. Let's compare it to the Niche Zero, another top quality conical burr grinder. Many of you know it's one of my favorites. Here you can see more fines, but still not a crazy amount. I've got a little hack to reduce fines with the Zero, and I did use it here. I always use it for pour over. There's a video explaining it if you're interested. So the flavor here is what I'm used to. I know this grinder well. Good range, more bitter sweetness, a little narrower spectrum of flavor, but always enjoyable. 
I have to give the edge to the Eureka here. It just happens I'm using the same coffee sample that I used for pour over in my last video with the EK43 and Niche Duo fitted with Brewbird. And I would compare the Eureka Baby with those two in terms of flavor. All of them are pretty similar. With espresso, again, this reminded me of the EK43. A bit light in body, but with a broad spectrum and not excessively bright. Half the time, that's the espresso I want. Half the time, I'm looking for that old school syrupy, bitter, toasty thing. I need to have at least two grinders. I tried this coffee sample with my Easy Presso JE Plus, which I reviewed ages ago, just for old times sake. I've never had coffee this good from a hand grinder. It has its irritations. It's like a sports car, kind of harsh riding, loud with uncomfortable seats, and you wonder why anyone would spend so much, but you try it out and performance makes up for it. I think the opening should be wider so that it accommodates all the Eureka 58mm accessories. This is such a popular size thanks to the old but ubiquitous E61. It would be nice if this grinder worked with most of the stuff that most people have. The JE Plus is better ergonomically. The body surface is grippy and the pommel is rounded and more comfortable. Clearances for your hands are better, but the crank isn't fitted properly into the top here and comes away too easily. The Easy Presso has a cheap pommel made of a soft wood simply painted with a plastic bushing. This is a nicer looking, better quality part, but the trade-off is a less comfortable grip. The edge digs into your hand. The JE Plus is crazy complicated. Does it really take this many parts to make a hand grinder? This is a fine little device in its price range, so I'll call it a great start. At this price, there have got to be trade-offs. The grinder leans toward flavor performance and design simplicity and away from comfort and ease of use. That's the trade-off here. I think it's a solid mid-range offering, but I'd like Eureka to expand the line. Obviously, they'll need to do some research, but personally, I would welcome a deluxe model with premium materials. I would want these burrs, definitely, but with more emphasis on ergonomic design. I would also love to see this burr set in an electric grinder. Eureka could bring in a device using a brushless DC motor. That gives you a lot of torque in a small package, and a lot less noise. It's also trivial to make it variable speed, and it could have a great footprint on the kitchen counter. Done right, I think it could become THE prosumer conical burr grinder. Well, that's about all for today. I have a number of little videos planned, and soon I'll have a full in-depth review of the Lilith Bianca, especially in comparison to the Profitec machine that I've been using for a year now. So, keep in touch. Cheers!